All right, so Andrew Tate, the former UFC fighter and current, I don't know, let's say insecure pyramid scheme wielding human trafficking grifter has officially been arrested in Romania. And so I know I'm a little bit late to the party in terms of covering this as it happened, but I figured it was still worthy of talking about not just because of the specifics of Andrew Tate, but also sort of like broader points that I think need to be made about how somebody like Andrew Tate with his views, with his opinions, manages to get so much traction online as he has over about the last year or so. So I got a good breakdown here from Vox where they basically summarize his arrest, what he's being potentially charged with, and you know some of those broader conversations that have been happening in the wake of his arrest. Okay, so here from Vox, they say, the arrest of misogynist influencer Andrew Tate explained. Okay, so what are they talking about here? They say, misogynist influencer Andrew Tate, who once said that he moved from the UK to Romania because, quote, and this is a quote here, rape laws are more lenient there, was arrested by Romanian officials on December 29th on charges of rape and human trafficking. Okay, so this is something that is like, for some reason, a core part of Andrew Tate. I mean, maybe it's part of the game that he's playing, but virtually every crime that he is being arrested with right now and that he's sitting in jail for right now is stuff that he is like openly and publicly talked about multiple times before on multiple different platforms okay so there's been sort of like a pushback significant pushback from a lot of his dick writers from a lot of his fans who are saying oh my god this is like you know the deep state or the matrix that's coming to get him and uh he's definitely innocent he even threw up a poll on his own twitter account which i don't know who's running that maybe he's running it somebody else may be a poll that was basically saying you know is andrew tate innocent uh and this was a matrix attack or is this like something where you believe the media, right? And an overwhelming majority of his fans said that they still to this day believe that he is innocent, which again is fucking wild considering that he's already said things like this. Okay, so this is who Andrew Tate is, right? So they continue saying the, co the country's Directorate of Investigate Investigating Organized Crime and Terrorism, or I guess let's say DICOT, said that Tate and his brother Tristan are suspected of having recruited victims for a criminal online porn scam. And in a translated press release, officials said that the Tate the Tates recruited victims by making them believe that they were interested in genuine relationships, then transported them to live in houses where they were under constant surveillance and forced to act in porn videos under threats of violence, and the videos would then be sold online. So this tactic right here actually has a name. It's called the lover boy method, I guess, which is something that I've been seeing float around recently. But again, this is all stuff that he has essentially admitted to publicly before. So again, nobody should be surprised that he has been arrested for this okay he's grooming people he is recruiting people into uh, you know these relationships and, and lying to them and basically pretending as if he actually wants something genuine with a lot of these girls and then just completely trapping them in these horrific conditions okay so this is Andrew Tate for you guys they say that Tate has proudly admitted to some version of this already, okay? So they're gonna get into some details here about what he's already said publicly about this type of a thing. They say the self-proclaimed king of toxic masculinity told the Daily Mirror that he and his brother once operated a quote, total scam business in which 75 women were paid to talk to men for $4 per minute and where the Tates would pocket most of the money. This kind of behavior is central to Tate's personal brand, that of the straight-talking hustler who films himself alongside exotic sports cars and scantily clad models wearing bathrobes and smoking cigars implying that by following his advice you too could live such a lifestyle okay and understand the reason why at the beginning of this video i said that he is a pyramid scheme uh wielding insecure man child is because he literally has been operating a pyramid scheme that's called hustlers university where he has somehow managed to convince thousands and thousands of predominantly young men and teenagers to sign up for what is basically like the dumbest financial advice you could possibly ask for. I mean, it's shit like, you know, doing drop shipping for Amazon, right? Which kind of ties back to another point, which is hilarious about Andrew Tate, is that he's trying to build himself as like, I'm the guy who's going to help you break through the matrix, right? I'm going to be the one who teaches you how to be successful and strong and break from the mainstream. And all he's doing is like, what? 
teaching young boys that you should, I don't know, do some side hustle to enrich Jeff Bezos, one of the richest men on the planet. I mean, like, that's who this guy is, right? Okay, a total fraud, a total grifter, does not give a single solitary shit about anybody who, you know, follows him. And just to, you know, put a, put a point on the type of shit that he says on a regular basis, right? So this is just within the last couple of days. And I kind of noticed this contradiction between some of, and this is very similar to somebody like uh, Jordan Peterson, who I think has a lot of overlap with his fan base, uh, to uh, Andrew Tate, but they'll throw some things out here where it's like very vague, like kind of decent advice almost, where it's like, you know, this one for example, if you're truly obsessed with working on yourself, you have very little time to find flaws in others. Okay, so there's not really much wrong with a tweet like this, right? Work on yourself, self-improvement, again, kind of what Jordan Peterson does, you know, make your bed, keep your room clean, blah, 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 stay healthy, all of that, just vague shit. And we'll throw stuff like this out there to kind of normalize, and then they'll just say the most insane shit and push people down these far-right rabbit holes, whether it's like anti-feminism or thinking that, you know, women are should be subservient to men or something like that which is something that Andrew Tate openly uh, talks about and says that people should be abiding by those standards. But, you know, he also, I mean, this is a direct contradiction just to show you the uh, hypocrisy of somebody like Tate and just the rampant inconsistencies of some of the stuff that he says. So again, this is within just like a week or two of, of each other, these same tweets. So here he's saying, you know, work on yourself. You have very little uh, time to find flaws in others. And then he'll just say some shit like this. You are poor. You are unimportant. Men do not fear you. What, why do I want men to fit? What, what are you even talking about, man? He says, your woman disagrees with you. Yeah, sometimes. That's, uh, you know, kind of like a normal thing that people do in relationships. They have disagreements. Okay, what is she just like my slave or something? I mean, literally, that's pretty much like what he advocates for. But he says, your woman disagrees with you. Your lives are shit. If I was forced to endure a year of your life, it would be the worst level of depression imaginable. Okay, so this is what he does, right? This is part of the grift. He goes out there. He puts a lot of these, uh, you know, already young and insecure men down. Maybe a lot of them feel alienated and disconnected, and they don't really have a sense of like their their future is being prosperous and they don't have any real sense of community and he preys on that sect of people within this country and around the world and basically tries to put them down and then give them like vague advice or trap them in his pyramid scheme hustlers university in order to try to rip them off in order to try to grift off of them and profit off of their alienation and off of their suffering basically okay so that's andrew tate for you right you can very clearly if you just pay attention to what he's saying you can see what he's trying to do and how he is recruiting people to be his followers and then to again financially benefit off of them right so that's andrew tate for you right but we continue down here with a little bit more information on this right so they say though tate has been courting fame for years his videos began gaining mainstream traction last year when clips of his angry diatribes and shady entrepreneurial advice regularly went viral on tiktok much of the discourse surrounding him relates to panic over the well-being of boys and young men and during that time middle and high school teachers reported noticing a major uptick in sexual harassment and sexist hate speech in their classrooms by their male students and response Response, all the major social media platforms banned his accounts, although under Elon Musk's ownership, Twitter reinstated his account in November, and they say it had been removed since 2017, when Tate tweeted in the aftermath of the Harvey Weinstein allegations, quote, again, this is a real quote here, if you put yourself in a position to be raped, you must bear some responsibility. Okay, so this is what he's putting in the heads of young, insecure, fragile men. Okay, this is what he's spreading around, right? So this is who Andrew Tate is. Obviously, people have a lot of problems with this guy, right? For many different reasons. But then we're going to get into a little bit more points down here in terms of like what the conversation really should be, especially from a, a left-wing perspective and how we can push back against the rise of some of these people. But first, just a little bit more information in terms of like how he got arrested and what is actually being done here. So... They say the brazenness of his cruelty and expensive but trashy aesthetic has made Tate the face of several unfortunate stereotypes in contemporary internet culture. The anti-feminist capitalizing on the Me Too backlash, the angry dude with a podcast mic, and the guy shilling for scammy pyramid scheme adjacent businesses. It also makes him extremely easy to make fun of, which is what happened, which on December 27th he tweeted at climate activist uh, Greta Thunberg, I'm sure I'm butchering her name, I can never figure it out, I hear everybody pronouncing her name differently, but I'll just say Greta Thunberg, in an attempt to brag about how terrible his sports cars are for the environment. Okay, so this was the whole Greta versus Andrew Tate beef that was going on that I didn't get to cover on this channel, right? So he says this out. Now, first of all, why are you talking to Greta? 
okay? Why, why do you feel the need to reach out and try to get a dunk on this young climate activist girl? right? Okay, so it's kind of just like embarrassing. You're supposed to be like the alpha male. You're supposed to be like the toughest guy in town, right? And you're literally trying to, you're going out of your way, in fact, because she didn't bring him up first. You're going out of your way to what, like flex your car collection on some young climate activist. It's like, this is pathetic. I mean, this is so beyond sad, right? This is not something that an alpha male, whatever you want that term to mean, would actually do, right? But he says, please provide me your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collection and their response respective enormous emissions, to which Thunberg replied, yes, and this is just absolutely eviscerating him, please do enlighten me, email me at smalldickenergy at getalife.com, okay, obliterated, and this actually became the fourth most liked tweet of all time on Twitter, okay, so, you know, credit to Thunberg for getting a, a solid one in there, right, but it continues, so this led to a lot of like different conspiracies surrounding why Andrew Tate ended up getting arrested at the time that he did by Romanian authorities, because basically he recorded a video response to this Greta Thunberg dunk on him. And he recorded a video response that had some pizza box in it. And uh, basically people were saying that like this, uh, you know, this is what led the Romanian police to realize that he was in Romania and that's why he got arrested. Turns out that that wasn't necessarily true, at least according to the Romanian authorities. But uh, she did get another one last dunk in there and said, this is what happens when you don't recycle pizza boxes after he had been arrested so you know calm down Greta you know you don't need to uh dance on his grave like this but anyways they continue saying in a video of his arrest okay and this is where it just gets honestly even more hilarious but they say in a video of his arrest Tate can be heard saying the matrix has attacked me <laughs> the matrix has attacked me Okay, and this reminds me of, of, of another video that I saw uh, floating around amid uh, Andrew Tate's circles of people who still support him, right? They posted a video of him, like, I don't know, a couple months ago, maybe a year ago or something like that. And he was basically saying, like, they are going to come after me. Like, the Matrix is going to try to come after me and either they'll arrest me or, uh, you know, they'll kill me. And people were putting that video around to basically imply, like, look, Andrew Tate, he's so powerful. He's such a disruptor. He's breaking out of the Matrix too much. So they had to go arrest him. And look, he predicted it. And it's like... Maybe he pr was able to like predict that because he knew and had been publicly talking about his many various crimes that he was involved in. But, you know, whatever. That's kind of a side point. His supporters obviously will stand by him no matter what. But, I mean, again, this is what's funny about this, right? The Matrix has attacked me. The Matrix. Again, you think you are breaking out of the Matrix by what? advocating for like rampant consumerism and you know being a, a cog in the machine and uh you know what doing like drop shipping for amazon and jeff bezos the wealthiest man on the planet i mean like how exactly are you breaking out of the matrix what because you're trying to reinforce the same hierarchy that has existed for centuries in this country i mean like you're you're anti-feminist you're you know uh, uh you know pushing all of these different things that's what breaking out of the matrix is to you i mean you're like perfectly towing the line for you know the status quo in this country right that's not breaking out of the matrix and in fact it's like the exact opposite lesson of what the matrix was actually trying to talk about in the movie which i'll talk about here in a second but they say as those familiar with the manosphere or QAnon will know the sci-fi film's concept of the red pill which is something conservatives talk about all the time i've heard elon musk ivanka trump all of these motherfuckers coming out and saying oh i've taken the red pill which they completely misunderstand the point of but they say it has become synonymous with a set of right-wing neo-reactionary beliefs that feminism has gone too far that wokeism whatever the fuck that means means a billion different things to a million different people but they say wokeism is a serious moral threat to personal freedom and that democracy and major democratic institutions are inherently suspect all of which is ironic considering the filmmakers intentions now again the matrix okay was literally created by two trans women Okay, that's who created the movie, The Matrix, the trilogy. Okay, two trans women. And they've actually directly responded to some of these conservatives like Elon Musk and Ivanka Trump and a lot of these other people and just basically given them a double middle finger and said, we hate you guys. You don't represent any of the actual lessons from the Matrix movies, right? So, I mean, like, they don't even understand the movie and the references within that movie that they use on a regular basis, right? So it's just kind of hilarious to me that, like, this is the term, this is the comparison, this is the, uh, you know, metaphor that you're going with here when you're just completely taking away the exact opposite lesson from what the people who made those movies were intending. I mean, it's just, again, kind of embarrassing to some extent, but they continue saying that 
DICOT, this Romanian authority uh, agency or whatever, has so far identified six victims who it says were sexually exploited by Tate's group. Wouldn't be surprised if it's many more than that, but this is the six they're confident with going with. And it did not specify which suspect was accused of rape. Um, and they say Tate, along with his brother, is being detained in prison for 30 days and has not yet been released despite false reports on TikTok. And apparently they also uh, took a lot of his cars. They like impounded and, and you know, uh, uh, took control of a lot of his like fleet of cars that he has i mean i'm guessing they went after his bugatti which is how he pronounces bugatti for some reason but uh yeah apparently they took his cars threw him in jail he's going to be there for you know a decent amount of time depending on what these charges actually bring but i want to finish off here because again i think this is a uh you know important debate that has been sort of going on on the left in the wake of this arrest that had been made okay so they say the arrest has once again brought Andrew Tate's name into the public discourse and with it the question of how to deal with the young boys and young men who have bought into his rhetoric. Tweeted the popular leftist streamer Vosh. So Vosh says, quote, I cannot stress enough how important it is to understand that 12 year old white boys on Twitch are not being pulled into fascism because of some Machiavellian desire to preserve and expand their privileges. It's because the right talks to them and the left doesn't. It's unclear, however, what a leftist Andrew Tate for teen boys would look like. And this is Vox responding to what Vosh just said, to be clear, okay? They say, it's unclear, however, what a leftist Andrew Tate for teen boys would look like somebody who's willing to embrace ca embrace casual sexism there are already plenty of them or whether mainstream or left-leaning culture really does ignore teen teenage boys who continue to be one of the key demographics for movies uh, music tv and video games okay so a couple of different things here first of all this is such a ridiculous disingenuous response to what vosh was actually just saying there and apologize for the uh the ambulance noise going on in the background, but this is such a disingenuous response to what Bosch was just saying. Bosch was not saying, we need somebody to embrace casual sexism on the left. I mean, that is like the exact opposite of the point of what Bosch was just saying. What Bosch was just trying to say, and I think he's right about this, is that you don't have, you know, there's been some people on the left who are trying to say that like, you have all of these young, you know, disproportionately cis, white, disaffected young men who are angry about different various things. They feel alienated, they feel disconnected, they don't have a sense of community or future for themselves, right? So you have all of these uh, people, and there have been some people on the left who basically say like, they're just simply choosing to go down this path and follow people like Andrew Tate, or I don't know, like Steven Crowder, or Ben Shapiro, or Jordan Peterson, or any of these other, you know, right-wing, semi-fascist, or openly fascist, or anti-feminist, or racist uh, political commentators, right? I don't agree with that. This isn't an inherent thing about some of these young men that just drives them to follow in this this their footsteps because they want to, like, protect the, their position within the hierarchy. That's not what this is, and believe it or not, I at one time was sort of like a an angsty, disaffected, uh, you know, young white kid who could have gone down a number of different pathways. Obviously, I'm a socialist, which I think was the right path for me to take, but that could have gone a number of different ways, right? I mean, I happened to have gone down the uh, leftist route that I did, you know, largely because of people like Bernie Sanders and his movement back in 2016 when I was in high school, you know, commentators like Kyle Kalinske, I would credit him a lot. I've been watching, you know, secular talk since I was like 14 or something like that. Just randomly being exposed to figures like that on YouTube and having my algorithm happen to suggest me that at some time and then getting interested in it, that's basically just like some of the random factors that went in to me formulating the political ideology that I have right now, right? Now, obviously, there's a bunch of other factors that played into that. I don't have deranged, like, you know, far-right fascist parents or anything that tried to indoctrinate me or anything like that. There's a ton of different factors there. But the point of what I'm trying to say is that you take somebody like me, who is now a, a firm socialist and I, you know, have my my beliefs on all of these different things, leftist beliefs on politics and social issues and the economy and all of these different things, right? But if you were to reverse the clock, and if I had just, when I was, I don't know, 13 or something like that, happened to have fallen down a rabbit hole of Jordan Peterson debate videos or, you know, a bench, well, probably not Ben Shapiro because he's pretty fucking annoying, but, and so is Jordan Peterson. But point stands, if I had just happened to fall down the wrong rabbit hole of Jordan Peterson or, you know, 
any of these other people, Sam Harris or, you know, all of these other people, if I had just been shown that, right, if my algorithm had just aligned slightly differently, and you have to keep in mind, the algorithms on a lot of these social media platforms are always going to trend to, uh, you know, bolstering right wing content because it's reactionary, it's inflammatory and all of that stuff. But if I had just gone down a different rabbit hole, right, if I hadn't have happened to catch on to like a Kyle Kalinske video or even like a David Pakman video back in the day when I used to watch him, right, if I had just been shown a different set of circumstances, I could have gone on an, a completely different path and not had the type of ideology that I have right now. So I think that Vosh is 100% correct when he says that we on the left shouldn't simply like look at figures like Andrew Tate and just cast aside anybody who happens to like what he says or some of what he says or they signed up for Hustlers University or something like that, which is kind of sad to an extent. But point is, I don't think we should just overlook those people or just condemn them and say like, well, they're just destined to be fascists or they're just destined to be right wing anti feminists because that's who they are. They just want to protect their position within the hierarchies that already exist. We do need to make an effort in order to reach out to disaffected or alienated young men on the left in order to show them a better vision of the world, right? In order to give them something to believe in, in order to show them how you can join community organizations, you can try to form a union in your workplace, you can empower yourself in ways that don't require putting other people down like people like Andrew Tate want to convince people to do. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me. No one does it like him. Believe me. Everyone is saying.